As you need retirement, obviously running your numbers is very important. Do you have enough to retire? And I think a lot of you are either doing DIY or you're talking to a bad financial advisor and they're giving you bad advice or you're giving yourself bad advice. And that comes to, do you have enough? You run the numbers and you realize there's a bit of a shortfall. And in this video, I'm gonna share my software and run through a scenario, a 60 year old couple that has enough to retire, but you need to do a little bit of planning to make it work. And they have more than enough to retire, but on the surface, it doesn't look like they have enough. So let's jump into it. So jumping into the software here, Mr. and Mrs. YouTube, they're both 60 years old, plan to live till 90. Uh, that's when we run the projections to. As far as assets go, they both have a $75,000 TFSA account. He has 400,000 in an RSP, she has 100,000. So you can see the 175 there on his side, 475. They have no debts or anything else. As far as government benefits go, because they're retiring at 60, they came to us and they said, look, we're gonna take CPP at 60, old age security at 65. So you can see here, he has 80% of full CPP at 65. So he's taking it at 60, it'll be reduced. And his old age security at 65. For Mrs. YouTube, she was looking at about 50% uh, maximum benefit at 65. Again, planning to take it at 60. So when we plug their numbers into the system, so this is Snap Projections, the planning software that we use. When we put both their information in here and just run like, where's the starting point? What are they at? You can see here, they're at $56,000 after tax and adjusted for inflation every year. Now, the issue that this client has was 56,000 was not going to be enough for them. They were looking for at least $5,000 after tax a month to enjoy retirement. And anything above that, and hopefully there would be some above that, to do a bit more traveling. So the 5,000 a month gives them a bit of lifestyle enhancement, and then above and beyond is even better. So when this was run, $56,000, they said, well, okay, Adam, how much longer do we have to work to get to that 60,000 so that we can retire? And I said, let's look at it a bit of a different way. Instead of working longer, let's see if we can kind of work with the numbers and everything that you've built up to this point to get you the income that you need. So the very first thing is we said, Instead of starting CPP at 60, what if we bump it to 70? Use a bit more of your money earlier, but guarantee that pension. We all want a defined benefit pension plan. Well, that's what CPP is. So if we can bump that to 70, is that gonna help? So let's do that first. A lot of you say, well, Adam, if you don't start CPP at 60, you wait till 70, between 60 and 70, like what's replacing that income? And the answer is the assets they've built up. Okay, so this takes away the pressure of, being invested longer term, we can kind of start living off that money, put some aside, work with the cash flow. Again, there's a lot of pieces that go into this. We're looking at it from a high level. Can they retire? Can we get them to retirement now versus having to wait longer? And what are the things we need to do to make that happen? So when we make the simple change to Canadian pension plan starting at 70, again, it's still at 80%. Uh, but you can see the, the amount is much greater because not only has it not been reduced by taking it early, it's been enhanced by taking it later. So close to $20,000 a year for Mr. YouTube. Mrs. YouTube, we delayed till 70 as well. Again, a bit of an enhancement, but still based on that 50% at age 65. So if we go back into the plan and say, okay, well, based on that, you can see their old age security is still starting at 65. CPP starting at 70 for Mrs. YouTube and the same will apply for Mr. YouTube. 65 and 70, how does this work for income? So when we go to combine income, we can see that we're now drastically more. We've been able to get them above that $60,000 threshold. So we haven't put more money into the plan. We haven't done anything else other than move their CPP from 60 to 70. And this is the power of planning. Run through these numbers. What makes the most sense for you? Again, this is what worked for these cup, this family. But maybe yours is different. Yours is probably different. How do things all come together? This is where financial planning is very important. If this couple was a DIY planner, plugged their system, you know, plugged their numbers into a system and just said, okay, we got to work another year or two and kind of run it that way. And trust me, a lot of you are doing that. You don't want to spend money with a CFP professional, a financial planner, because you think you can do it on your own. Typically a DIY plan will get you about 80% of the way there if it's done really well but the last 20% is all the tax savings. It's all the strategy, it's all this kind of stuff. And a lot of you are missing out on that. So I encourage you to work with your financial planner. If you don't have one, hire a financial planner. Our office does offer the service, a fee-for-service financial planning. You can learn more at parallelwealth.com slash planning. We'll link it below as well. But again, here's a case scenario where a client thought they had to work longer, 
and it wasn't the case. They could retire now and have more than enough to live off for the rest of their life. So as we went through this client, we can see that, okay, well, you know, there's, there's some RSP meltdown stuff. You can see their tax rate savings empties out earlier. We wouldn't want that. We do more of an RSP meltdown, get rid of that a little earlier. So I haven't done the tax planning in here, which will only enhance. It'll give them a bit more income and it'll save them on taxes. So that's great. There's, there's more layers to benefit here, but high level, we've got them from 56 to 60,000. We've been able to get them retired and we have them in a good spot and that gets them all the way down to age 90. Now, what we went back to this client with was great, we got you your $5,000, but what if we went another layer deeper and said, what if we ladder this? Like you may not need $60,000 later in life, so let's ladder this. And you can see here, we were able to give them, again, bumping CPP to 70, but no other drastic changes, no extra income or, or assets coming into the plan. We are able to bump them up to 65,000. So we gave them an extra $5,000 for spending, for travel, for doing fun stuff. That goes all the way till 70. So it's kind of that go-go phase of retirement. Then at age 71, it drops to 60,000. That goes all the way till 80. So again, that kind of slow go. And then the no-go phase, $50,000 after tax adjusted for inflation, which would be much more than most of our clients in that age bracket are living off. That's a good income. I know a lot of you think 50,000, you can't live off that. Um, unless you're renting and have a high rent, yes, you can. You can absolutely live off that in your 80s and 90s. So this is a great case scenario and something that we go through with our clients and you need to go with your, uh, through with your planner to make sure, like, are you working longer than you need to? A lot of us, we wanna retire as soon as we can. And sometimes there's a bit of strategy that needs to be involved. So for this client, all it was was, you know, delay CPP till 70, that gave us a, a big bump. And then later it gave them that kind of extra money for travel and spending that earlier in retirement when they were able to do so. We saved this client at least a year or two of extra work that didn't need to happen. And trust me, at 60 to 62, those are prime years. Hopefully you're still healthy, you're able to do stuff, enjoy life, travel, that kind of stuff. It's an important part of retirement if you're able to. So run through these numbers with your financial planner, make sure you look at you know, RSP meltdown, the laddered income strategy we talk about, you know, when's the best time to take government benefits, CPP and old date security. All these things are encompassing. They have to all work together. And that's why on the surface, you might say, well, delaying that income at CPP from 60 to 70 is a 10 year gap. Of course, you can't retire, have less income, right? But it comes in from other sources. And overall, it's a better case scenario. And this is case in point.